a very good afternoon to all the TV education viewers and this is V Balasubramanyam working for MCME Sikandarabad as an associate professor in electronics department in this video I am going to explain you about the basics of orthogonal coordinate systems in the trace use we have got two dimensional geometry and three dimensional geometry in two dimensional geometry any point can be expressed in two coordinate systems namely polar coordinate systems and Cartesian coordinate system. So, in polar coordinate system, any point P can be expressed in terms of two coordinates, namely R, the radius vector, and theta. And similarly, in Cartesian coordinate system, the same point can be represented as x comma y. Now, let me throw some more light on this 2D geometry. What is Cartesian coordinate system and what is polar coordinate system? Now, if I take an orthogonal axis like this, wherein this is the horizontal axis and this is the vertical axis. And if I'm having a point P around here, okay. Now, what is R and what is theta? Okay, so what is R and what is theta? So, this point, let me say that it is representing the origin O. This point is representing the origin O, and join these two points the point P with the origin O. The length of this OP would represent the radius vector R. So, R represents the distance between the origin O and the point P. Next, what is theta? The angle made by the radius vector OP with respect to the horizontal axis would be your theta. So, this angle re represents theta. So, a point P R comma theta in polar coordinate systems is represented in this way. Now, in the same fashion, if I wanted to represent a point P <coughs> in the same fashion, if I wanted to represent a point P in Cartesian coordinate system, in Cartesian coordinate system, then let me consider that this vertical line has x axis and sorry, the vertical line has y axis and this has x axis, the horizontal line. And let me say the point P is located somewhere here, which is represented as x comma y. Now, what is x? And what is y? Which, which distance signifies x and which distance signifies y? Here, drop a perpendicular from P onto y axis. Drop a perpendicular from P onto y axis. The length of this perpendicular or the distance between P and y axis would give us x. So, if you observe, this distance x is measured parallel to the x-axis. Similarly, drop a perpendicular from P onto x-axis. So, the length of the distance, the length of the dropped perpendicular onto x-axis would represent y. So, this would be your y coordinates in Cartesian coordinate system. So, the thing to be noted here is both x and y are distances in case of Cartesian coordinate system 
and in case of polar coordinate system one of it one coordinate is a radius vector r which is a length and another is an angle so in cartesian coordinate system whether it is two dimensional geometry or three dimensional geometry all the coordinates would be lengths invariably and coming to the remaining coordinate systems one of it may be or two of it may be lengths and one or two may be angles now let me explain you how to convert a point from cartesian coordinate system to cylindrical co i mean polar coordinate system now now a point p x comma y is to be converted to point p r comma theta this means to say i know the cartesian coordinates and i need to convert it into the polar coordinates so that represents cartesian to polar conversion so that means we know x y values and i need to determine r and theta from x and y so simply what are the relations for x and r and theta r is given by simply under root of x square plus y square and theta would be tan inverse y by x as simple as that so theta is tan inverse y by x and r is under root of x square plus y square on a similar lines if i wanted to convert p r comma theta to x comma y that means to say i wanted to convert from from polar to cartesian that is i know r comma theta so these are known for you and i need to determine x and y okay so x is given by simply r cos theta and y is r sin theta so the relation for x is r cos theta and the relation for y is r sin theta in terms of r and theta and coming to the three dimension geometry yeah now if we observe the orthogonal coordinate systems in three dimension geometry i can say that any points p can be represented in terms of three coordinate systems namely the cartesian coordinate system the cylindrical coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system now any points p can be represented in terms of cartesian coordinate systems as p of r x comma y comma z that is all the three distance all the three coordinates are distance coordinates coming to the cylindrical coordinate system any points p can be expressed as p rho phi and z where rho is the length of the radius vector phi is the angle made with respect to the horizontal reference horizontal and z is the virtual height i mean it is the vertical height coming to the spherical coordinate system r stands for the radius vector length theta is the elevational angle and phi would be the azimuthal angle of course when we are dealing with uh, these two individually we, we will throw much light on what is azimuthal angle and elevation angle there now let us start with the analysis of cartesian coordinate system yeah in the first method we can represent a point p as p of x y and z where all the three coordinates x y and z are distances now let me explain you how to understand what is x what is y and what is z coordinates now before going to coordinates let me explain you what is x y plane y z plane and z x plane now the plane is nothing but it's a combination of two axes so if i take x and y so all this plane constituting of x and y axis would be called as x y plane similarly this is the combination of y z so the board is appearingly it is on the y z plane similarly if you take the combination of z and x axis so this plane the plane containing the plane containing uh, the combination of z and x can be named as z x plane now let me explain you what is x now 
this first of all make the point P fall onto the floor and let me say its vertical projection as P dash. So what is P dash? P dash is the vertical projection of P onto XY plane or simply floor. Now uh, this is your P dash representation in the figure. Now fr uh, from the P dash uh, the distance of the point P dash from yz plane that means if i wanted to take the distance x i should take the distance between the point p and yz plane so this p dash is here and this distance would be obviously the distance between the point p and yz plane similarly this so obviously this is x similarly the distance between point p dash and zx plane would give you y that means this is p dash and this is your zx plane so the distance between this p dash and zx plane is this distance so the this distance is nothing but your y similarly the distance between the point p the distance between the point p and xy plane would give you z so from the figure this would be your z so uh, that is the distance between the point p and xy plane so the, in this way you can uh, you can assume what is x what is y and what is z now let me explain you the increments in cartesian coordinate system and the unit vectors now coming to the unit vectors along x y x y axis y axis and z axis we have got a x cap a y cap and a z cap are the unit vectors so what is ax cap it is a unit vector along x axis what is ay cap it is a unit vector along y axis and what is az cap it is a unit vector along z axis similarly it, it can also be represented in some textbooks as i bar j bar and k bar so i bar is similar to your ax cap j bar is similar to ay cap and k bar is similar to az cap now let me say that the point p x y z is moved to a new point p dash of x plus dx y plus dy and z plus dz what does what does it imply in the x direction the net increment is dx in the y direction the net increment is dy in the z direction the net increment is dz so if i wanted to determine the total incremental volume so I, first of all let me list out the incremental lengths so what is the da what is delta x delta x is your increment in x direction so x plus uh, from x it is moved to x plus dx so every tom tick and harry can come to a conclusion that the net uh, this net change is dx in x direction so delta x is the change in x direction which is dx similarly delta y is the change in length in y direction which is dy similarly what is delta z it is a change in length in z direction which is given by dz so delta x delta y delta z are given by dx dy and dz respectively now coming to the volume now due to this change there might be increment in the volume also so due to that change what is the incremental volume let me name it as some delta v delta v so volume is a three dimensional element so everybody everybody knows that it is a three dimensional element so how to get the net volume it is the change in x direction multiplied by change in y direction multiplied by so the incremental volume delta v is delta x into delta y into delta z so it is simply dx dy dz so this is the incremental volume in the point p when it is moved from p x y z to p dash x plus y dx y plus dy and z plus dz now let me calculate the incremental areas so incremental areas are in three planes one is in x y plane y z plane and z x plane so coming to x y plane delta s so delta s represents the surface area increments so delta s in x y plane is delta x into delta y 
so delta x into delta y represents the area incremental area in xy plane so it is we know that delta x is dx delta y is dy so dx into dy okay and similarly delta s would be delta y into delta z in y z plane and it is dy into dz similarly delta s would be dz into dx in case of zx plane so these are the incremental areas in the three planes xy plane yz plane and zx plane the next coordinates system in the three dimensional geometry is the cylindrical coordinate system now if i explain you how a cylinder is been formed then you can easily understand the concept of cylindrical coordinates the best example we can assume for a cylindrical coordinate is system is an object like a cylinder or a glass a cylindrical glass or a pipe now if you assume any any of this in your mind how it is formed let me explain you take a radius vector take a radius vector that radius vector you rotate it in the horizontal plane by 360 degrees okay so after taking a radius vector that radius vector is rotated in the horizontal plane by 360 degrees and the tip of the radius vector obviously will describe a circle okay so it is going to describe a circle the circle so so formed you extend it in the vertical direction so if you are extending the so formed circle in the vertical direction a cylindrical is been formed okay so if i take that example here and try to let us try to visualize what are the three coordinates in the cylindrical coordinate system now any point p in cylindrical coordinate system can be represented as rho phi and z now what is rho rho is exactly the distance from the vertical axis to the point p that is it is the distance between the point p and the vertical axis now what is phi first of all make the point p fall onto the ground plane or the horizontal plane or the floor okay and let us name it as p dash join o with p dash so the angle made by o p dash with respect to the reference horizontal axis we can call that as the angle phi next what is z is uh, it is the distance between the point p and the horizontal plane so the distance between the xy plane and the point p would give you the value of z so uh, if you observe the the radius vector rho is it can vary from 0 to infinity similarly the angle phi it can vary only from 0 to 2 pi it's a finite value so angle can be varying from 0 to 2 pi in order to describe a circle and that in the vertical direction i can extend the cylinder from minus infinity to infinity along the z coordinate or z axis okay so these are the limits of uh, rho phi and z okay now let us uh, explain let me explain you how a vector can be represented in cylindrical coordinate system so if i take a bar it is a rho into a rho cap what is this a rho cap it is the unit vector along the rho direction it is a unit vector along the rho direction plus what is a rho here capital a rho capital a rho is the component of a in rho direction next it is a phi into a phi cap so a phi would represent the component of a along the phi axis and a phi cap is the unit vector along the phi axis plus a z into a z cap so this is a vector representation of any vector a where a rho a phi and a z are the components of a along rho phi and z directions respectively and what are a rho if a phi cap and a z cap they are the unit vectors along rho direction phi direction and z direction okay let us consider the increments of a point p moved from rho phi and z to p rho plus d rho phi plus d phi 
एंड जेड प्लस डी जेड द इंक्रीमेंटल लेंथ अलॉन्ग रो डायरेक्शन इज सिंस रो एंड रो प्लस डी रो आर बोथ डिस्टेंसेस आई कैन डायरेक्टली राइट डेल्टा रो एस रो प्लस डी रो माइनस रो विच गिवस एस डी रो सो डेल्टा रो इज डायरेक्टली डी रो सो देर इज नो कन्फ्यूजन इन दैट नाउ सिमिलरली इफ आई टेक द इंक्रीमेंटल लेंथ अलॉन्ग जेड एक्सेस ऑल्सो इट इज जेड प्लस डी जेड माइनस जेड सिंस बोथ आर लेंथ आई कैन से डायरेक्टली डेल्टा जेड ऑल्सो विदउट एनी कन्फ्यूजन आई कैन एडिट एस डी जेड so delta z the change in z direction is dz now comes the phi now phi is an angle we always consider the deltas as a change in length so i need to convert this angle into length so if you observe this figure it is the sector length it is the sector length if you consider the sector length where the angle made by the sector is del de d phi at the center then by the formula s is equals to r into theta where s is the arc length r is the radius vector and theta is the angle subtended by the arc at the center so using this relation i can write it as simply delta phi so what is delta phi delta phi is the incremental length in phi direction which is the arc length Is equals to s is equals to r into theta. Means r is the radius vector. So here, if you observe, what is the radius vector? Radius vector is the or rho. So into rho into what is the angle subtended by the arc at the center? It is d phi. So rho into d phi would be the incremental length in phi direction due to due to the change phi to phi plus d phi now comes the volume incremental volume and incremental surface areas now if i if i talk about the incremental surface area in r phi plane it is delta s is equals to delta if i am talking about rho phi plane delta rho into delta phi so which gives you rho d rho d phi next delta s so this is in rho phi plane Similarly, delta S is equals to similarly delta S is equals to delta phi into delta z. That is rho d phi d z in phi z plane, and delta z into delta rho in that is nothing but d rho d z in z rho plane. so these are the incremental areas coming to the incremental volume so delta s is sorry delta v is simply delta rho the increment in rho direction into delta phi the incremental length in phi direction into delta z so if you just substitute these three with their respective values in terms of rho phi and z it is rho d rho d phi dz so the beauty of this concept or the underlying importance of this concept is that everybody knows that the volume of a volume of a cylinder is pi r square h but nobody i mean very few of us know how we got this formula okay we know that the volume is pi r square into h but how we got that just by integrating this relation so delta v is given by this relation so v is simply the integral of this so since it is a volume it is triple integral and what about rho rho varies from 0 to r so where r is the radius of the cylinder next phi phi varies from if you observe from the limits of phi it is since a circle 0 to 2 pi and z varies from 0 to h where h stands for the height of the cylinder so just rho d rho d phi d z so that is simply rho square by 2 from 0 to r and phi from 0 to 2 pi and z from 0 to h so if i substitute the limits it is r square by 2 into 2 pi into h so this two gets cancels 
so you remain with what you remain with pi r square h this is how we got the volume of the cylinder as pi r square h